what are the sort of the key pillars that you need in place to to have a sustainable, um, successful, world class environment? Do you think? Yeah, I think probably like any any business or team, like the, the quality of the people in the room should you know the quality of people is your biggest asset. So I think recruitment of you know good people that are extremely competent in their roles is is key. Um, you know that that for me is always um, a starting point. Um, and you're always going to have people at different levels, aren't you? Like your high performance manager, you know, they're, they're the most experienced person in the in the performance team. Um, and you're going to have developing um, people underneath that. But I think you know you've, you've got to have good expertise and um, competency to start with. What would be um, some examples of key areas that you think? I guess field team sport athletes should focus on. Yeah, I think um, you know, obviously, like from a performance side, um, you know your your fitness and your ability to repeat high quality efforts um, is really important. Um, and you know, for, for any role that I go in, try and have a really, really clear understanding of you know the physical demands of the game. Um, but also a really clear understanding of, you know, how, how the coaches want to play the game, and that probably mm-hmm. then dictates, you know, what is what is more important than the other. I remember, you know, again, we're back at, going back to the Chiefs here, but we, we you know, sort of what happens, isn't it? We had home semi home final, and you know, all this money came in. What about from a sort of physical and mental aspects of peak performance? Like, um, is there, uh, I imagine you'd have performance psychologists that you've worked with in the past that uh, sort of own that mental side, but uh, how do coaches and performance staff sort of help with that interplay of physical and, and mental to prepare sort of robust athletes? Yeah, I think, um, you know, if one thing we have tried to do previously as well with, with our medical team is, just try and convince them that we're all performance coaches, we're all influencers. So, you know, we'll have our part to be these cultural leaders. So, so, you know, how I push and hold a player accountable, probably quite different to how one of our medics would, but what we're always trying to do was to, uh, you know, there there was a common language and, you know, the whole, you walk past the standards you accept, wanted, um, you know, anyone in the, in the environment, any sort of member of staff to be able to, you know, pull up a player if something wasn't done to the level required. I imagine there's a balancing act between consistency and consistent exposure, but also having adaptability and keeping training fresh. Um, mm. wh- where do you sort of lean? Is it sort of the feel of the group, the subjective sort of conversations you're having with the players on when things need to be shaken up or... Is it more objective markers once you feel like your your programming's getting the response that you want physically, you then start to add in some some variability? What's your sort of thoughts? Yeah, yeah I think we certainly have a, a periodized plan, plan, Jack, and for my for the last six to eight years, been involved in teams that we, we try and adopt a bit more of a tactical model where, where you know, we, we try and achieve majority of our speed and conditioning work within a rugby context, um, and that involves, um, you know, quite a probably a bit more planning. But I find that approach really, really, really stimulating. You've got to work really closely with your coaches. Um, you know, you've got to have a really sharp, um, I guess, reporting um, GPS sort of databasing system. What we're sort of the now with the experience you have, and I guess for coaches that want to make that shift going into next preseason. What are certain things to take into account? Is it sharpening your monitoring um, sort of strategies or is it more just some the ways that you brought that work in and being mm. able to manage the, the load or yeah, talk us through the learnings, I guess? Yeah, that. I think um, like Japan's quite easy because we get a three-month preseason, so um, you get a long time to, uh, to build athletes, whereas, you know, Super, Super Rugby historically would get kind of three weeks before Christmas and then two weeks after Christmas and then you're playing warm-up games and then the season starts. So um, I think like progressive overload is key. Um, and, you know, you, you probably do need to 
a really solid wellness system because there's always signs where and it's it's like, like you've got to make a decision where you want to be conservative or you want to keep pushing but i think a strong wellness monitoring system is obviously really important